In this video I want to show you how to implement custom keybinds by using JavaScript and we will do it on the real project with implementation of undo functionality. As you can see here on the screen I just prepared an HTML with single input. And as you can see this is my markup, so inside body we have a form with input and we also have here a div list where we must write our new items which actually means we are typing something here, we are hitting enter and we see new item here below the list. But the main idea of undo functionality will be that we will implement a custom keybind, control z or command z, which will undo our last action and this is adding of the item. So now let's jump inside main.js. As you can see here I have main.js and it is completely empty. And first of all we must get all our DOM elements. So here I want to get a form and as you can see here I am using dollar sign to say that this is a DOM element. And here we can use document query selector and inside we are providing our form class. Now I will copy paste this line twice because here as a second variable we must create an input and here we have a class input and the last one here will be our list where we will add our items and here the class should be list. Now we want to create a new handler for submitting of our form. This is why here we will have form add event listener and we are listening here for submit. And here we must access the event because we want to block the default behavior of the form. This is why here I will write event dot prevent default and in this case our form won't be submitted to the backend. Also here we can now console log our value from the input. So here will be dollar input dot value. And let's check this out. I will reload the page and open here console. So here I will type our item and hit enter. And as you can see this is our input now, which actually means it is working correctly and now we can save this item from the input to our list. This is why we must create a new DOM element and push it inside the list. After this we can create a new property and let's name it new item. And again with dollar because this is a DOM element. And here we can write document create element and we want to create just a simple div. And after this we just want to set inside the text. This is why here dollar new item dot in the text and here we want to assign our dollar input dot value that we wrote here on the top. And after this we must attach this child to our list. So here will be dollar list append child and here we are providing our new node which is dollar item and at the end we want to clear our input so here will be dollar input dot value equals empty string let's check if it's working so here i am reloading the page i am typing something i am hitting enter and here we can see our item and we can add these items indefinitely and we just put them inside our list which actually means our small project is ready, but now we want to implement custom keybinds and this is the whole goal of this video. And to implement custom keybinds we simply need to create a binding on the key down. So here we are typically writing document dot add event listener and here our type will be key down. Sometimes you also want a key up, but we are using key down more often. So here we have a key down and our listener and the event here is really important and we want to console log it here now. So here let's write key down comma event and check what we have. And actually here when I'm on the page and I'm just hitting some button as you can see here is key down which actually means it happens every single time when we're hitting any key. And here we have some important information. For us the interesting part is this alt key false, this is our modifier. We also have here a code, this is our key that we used, but we won't really use code, it is not comfortable. What we want to use here is key, in our case key is F, which actually means I pressed F button. And also we can use here meta key, which is command on the macOS and we can check it for false or true which actually means typically we want to read key from here and sometimes additionally we want to use modifiers like for example control or command if you want to implement some key bind like for example control z. So now we must write a logic with pressing of control z because actually key down for anything doesn't make any sense. This is why here we can write if 
event dot control key and this is boolean if we hit it control when we hit it a button but it is not enough because it doesn't cover command and I want here also to check for command on macOS this is why here I will write or event dot meta key and meta key is a command key and here I want to put a brackets because we will have additionally other condition and here we can write and event dot key equals and in our case it should be that. Now we can wrap our console log inside if and check if it's working. So I am reloading the page, I am typing something and we don't see any console log. But after I am hitting Ctrl Z, we are getting key down, which actually means this is exactly how you are writing custom key binds inside JavaScript. So now let's implement the logic of Ctrl Z for our application. What we want to do after console log, for example, we can write here Ctrl Z is pressed. And after this, we want to remove the last child from our list, which actually means here, first of all, we want to check if our list is empty, because if it is empty, then we can't undo anything. This is why here we can check, okay, do we have items inside our list? For this, we can write $list.children.length and we want length to be big as zero. In this case, we will implement our logic. So what we want to do inside, we want to remove the last child. In this case, $list.removeChild and to get the last child of the list, we can write $list.lastChild. This is it. Let's check this out, I'm reloading the page, I'm typing here several children, now I'm hitting here Ctrl Z, and as you can see our last child disappeared. Once again Ctrl Z, we are removing our child, once again Ctrl Z, we removed it. Now I'm hitting again and nothing is happening, and our code is not broken, and actually without this if condition, our code won't work, because we can't remove a child which doesn't exist. So we successfully implemented our feature, but I want to show you one additional library to work with custom hotkeys, and it is called hotkeys.js. What is the point of using library, you might ask? As you can see here, we are writing this code with event control key, event meta key, and if you have a lot of key binds, it might be not comfortable for you. This is why here the idea of this library is simple. There are lots of predefined hotkeys and we can combine them. For example, as you can see here, we can write hotkeys and then we have here Ctrl A, Ctrl B, R, F and we have different cases for different logic. And this is extremely efficient. This is why I want to show you how to use this library for our small project. So first step will be to add this library inside our index.html. So here I am just pasting a script of hotkeys min.js. Now we can jump back inside our main and I will comment out this document at event listener because we will try to write hotkeys instead. This is why here I want to write hotkeys and this is now a global function inside window and we can provide inside keys that we want to track. In our case it is just Ctrl Z or Command Z. This is why here I will write Ctrl plus Z comma command plus z. And as you can see this logic is much more readable than this logic here, because here we have human readable text. As a second parameter here we also provide a function and here we have access to our event, but we are also getting here a handler. So with event it is clear it is exactly the same event like it was here, but let's look what is handler. So here I want to write console log control z pressed, and here I want to check our handler. Let's reload the page and type something. Now I'm hitting Ctrl Z and you can see our handler. As you can see, we are getting less information than inside event, but this is the most useful information for us. For example, what element it is, the key, key down is true or false, depending if we are triggering key down or key up. Now here we have key up false, here we have different modifiers and our shortcut command Z. So what we can do now, we can copy paste this logic with if directly inside and check if it's working. I'm reloading the page, I'm adding an item, I'm hitting Ctrl Z and this item is removed, which actually means it works successfully with hotkeys. As you can see, the syntax differs a little bit, but not that much. But you might say here, okay, I don't see the point of using hotkeys library, I can just write native JavaScript. This is totally fine, you can do it, but if you have a lot of hotkeys, you must manage them. As you can see here, there are lots of possibilities. 
For example, you have different supported keys like Shift, Options, Alt, Control and so on. It is comfortable. So you can define also your own hotkeys. And one feature that I really like here is setting scopes. The main idea is that you might have different hotkeys for different parts of your application. And then you must trigger some hotkeys on specific page. And here we're using scopes for this. For example, as you can see here, we're setting hotkeys, set scope, issues, and then only hotkeys which are registered for issues will be called. In this case here we have Ctrl O, Ctrl Alt Enter for issues. And this is the scope, and then this code will be triggered only when our issue scopes is active. And this is extremely comfortable. And also, if you are interested to check if you know 25 most common programming terms, make sure to check this video also.